Hey guys, in this video we'll cover adding meshes in edit mode. Quick reminder, this lesson is from our complete intro to Blender course that we're offering for free for a limited time on YouTube. If you're new here, I'd recommend starting at the beginning of the course. I've added a link in the description. All right, go ahead and open up Blender and let's jump right in. To begin this lesson, let's start another new file. So go up to your file menu, pick new, general, and as usual, there's no need to save this unless you'd like to come back to it. Now that we know how to use object mode and edit mode, it's important that we point out a difference in how we can add meshes so that you don't get confused later. So let's go ahead and do this. We're in object mode by default. Press tab on your keyboard. That will switch you to edit mode. Remember, that's that drop down in the upper left here. Okay, while you're in edit mode, it could be common to make some changes. We're not worried about making any right now, but perhaps you would delete a vertex or maybe you would grab one of the vertices and move it to change the shape of the object. And then you might say to yourself, okay, I need to add another mesh to create the next piece of what I'm working on. So let's do that. Let's pretend that we've made some changes to this cube, but now it's not just gonna be a cube, the shape is gonna have some other parts and pieces to it. So let's add a new mesh. Hold down Shift and press A. And you'll notice that the menu for Add looks a little different. Instead of having a mesh fly out, we just only see the mesh options. This is because of the nature of how we're doing this, so I'll explain more later. But let's say that we wanna add a cylinder. So go ahead and click on Cylinder. And at first you might say, well, where is it? I I think I see it, but only a part of it. And it's overlapping in the exact same spot as the cube. So it's pre-selected, so press G for grab, and let's move it over just to the side and click to set it down. Hey everyone, we're doing something a little unconventional here. And for a limited time, we're giving you access to one of our paid courses for free right here on YouTube. And this lesson is a part of it. Blender is a beast of a program to learn, but with the right approach, it doesn't have to be. That's why we created Blender Academy, to help people build the Blender skills they need and then go out and get the jobs they want. We hope you find these lessons to be a good investment of your time. If you do, and you're serious about learning Blender, head over to our website and continue learning with us. Thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe, and now, back to the lesson. So you might think of this as, I've got a cube and then I've got the next piece of what I'm making, which is a cylinder, and that looks great. Now, press the tab key on your keyboard. This will switch you back to object mode. And let's say that you're thinking to yourself, I need to move the position of that cube. Well, with the select tool, you click on it to select it and you see the orange outline. Then press G for grab. And as you move it, you realize that the cylinder is coming along with it. So go ahead and click to set that down. The same would be true for rotate or scale. These two objects are not two objects, it's one object. So when you were in edit mode for the cube, you went inside of that wrapper, that object wrapper for that cube, and you put a cylinder in there. So now within that single object wrapper, you have what you see as a cube and a cylinder, but what Blender sees as one object that just happens to look like this thing here. And we haven't covered it yet. We'll be covering it in some future lessons. But in the upper right, this is the outliner panel up here. And you'll see that there's a camera and a light, which we talked about we always have in a scene. But we only have the cube here. We don't have a cube and a cylinder. So the way Blender thinks about this, we only have this one object. Now, you might say, well, what's the big deal? Who cares? Well, in general, if you're going to add a new mesh, for the most part, you tend to want to be in object mode. That way you can keep each new mesh separate, not just so that you can see it separately in the outliner, but so that you can edit it separately, transform it, and just in general deal with it separately, even if it's always gonna be attached. So let's say that you were making something where you had two pieces of wood, but then you needed to show some fastener type clip in between the two pieces. Even if it's always going to be that the two pieces of wood and the fastener come together, you'd probably want those to be three separate objects so that you could see each one here and manipulate them differently rather than as one object in Blender. The reverse could be true, though. There could be a reason, press tab on your keyboard, 
that in edit mode, you'd think to yourself, I don't think of this as a cube in a cylinder. I think of it as some sort of object that I'm trying to piece together. And I want to use a few meshes together in edit mode and then edit them so that it all makes sense together as one thing. So it is possible that you would add a mesh in edit mode, but just important that you see this difference now. It's really common that you're working in edit mode and then you get ready to do the next thing and you add a new mesh and you don't realize later, press tab to get back to object mode, you don't realize until later, oh no, I did that inside of edit mode and now everything is kind of all grouped or stuck together or in general, it's just one object. So you've seen it, you understand now uh, that this is possible. And if you ever find that you're working later and you go to select something in object mode and it's selecting many pieces together, it should be your clue. You may not remember this lesson exactly, but it should be your clue. Oh yeah, I remember there's something about how you add meshes. And if you're in one mode or the other, it kind of changes how Blender behaves. So it's a little abstract now, but as we get going down the line in, in future lessons, we're going to have to be really diligent about understanding and remembering when we're in edit mode versus object mode as we're adding new meshes and in general manipulating the geometry. Okay, with that aside out of the way, we're now ready to move on to the next set of lessons where in edit mode, so I'll press tab here, in edit mode, we'll begin to uncover some of these tools that are appearing across the left side to further manipulate the geometry as we're trying to create the types of shapes we need in Blender. Congratulations, you made it through the lesson. Did you find this video to be helpful? Let us know by giving it a like. If you're ready for the next lesson, you can find it in this playlist. And if you're interested in learning more about how we can help you build the skills you need, head over to blenderacademy.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, happy blending.